happy to, to try, try and convey these ideas in the stage show and still have like Godier costumes and stuff and be entertaining. Well, <clears throat> I'm not interested in hitting people over the head. I think that. I mean, I, I'm not militant to anything, and I don't. I think I don't want to be pedantic. You know, to me, it's more interesting if you interject humor in all the messages. That way, people get what you're saying, but they sort of get it. I mean, laughing. You know. I mean, there's irony in everything that I do, so, yeah. in the show. So you're saying, well, always leave them laughing? Well, I just think it's better to, you know, to have humor, that's all. Yeah. A sense of humor. And not take yourself too seriously. We'll be having some more laughs with Madonna about voguing, among other things, in just a moment, so don't go away. Welcome back to Breakfast with Madonna. During the course of our talk with Madonna after the first show of her world tour in Tokyo last April, we naturally got around to the subject of how she goes about writing songs with her two collaborators, Patrick Leonard and Stephen Bray, the difficulties of performing in a downpour of the sort that greeted her in Japan, and how much she does or doesn't like touring in general. We had run into Madonna's brother, Chris Ciccone, backstage at that show. Chris did some of the stage designs for this tour, but the main reason he was out on the road with his sister this time around, he told us, was, as he put it, who knows if she'll ever tour again? To which Madonna's response was as follows. That's what he said he's out here for? Well, he didn't really put it quite mm -hmm. that way, but he led me to believe that, you know, maybe you would be I, I certainly wouldn't tour in this capacity. I mean, this, this one really wore me out. Why so? Um, was it the rain? Was it the... No, not this show, this yeah. tour. Yeah. This, I'm um, putting it together because... Um, I really put a lot of myself into it. I think it's a real personal statement, and it's it's much more theatrical than anything I've ever done. And uh, I just, I mean, I think that it is a more, much more of a theater piece. Yeah. And and in that respect, um, I mean, I have to pay a lot more attention to detail, and set, and costume, and lighting, yeah. and stuff. And it just took a lot out of me. Does everyone get that sort of thing, do you think, around the world? I mean, you're going to be going around the world. Do you understand the concept of theater? Do you the Japanese understand the way Americans do or the French do? I don't know if they're going to look at it and say, oh, this is like theater, but they're certainly going to be um, affected the way I think theater affects you in that, that there's a kind of catharsis, like, yeah. from beginning to end. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a piece where we don't have to stop you know, at, at the end of every number and yeah. like people applaud. I mean, we could really do the show without audience interaction, which a lot of concerts rely on. So. Yeah. Were you worried tonight? Except if it's raining, <laughs> then I have to sort of ad lib. Maybe you were worried tonight, like Friday the 13th, that the rain is pouring down. I, I mean, yeah, I did. dangerous up there or what? It was extremely dangerous, yeah. yeah. I mean, really, you could have, somebody could have fallen off and died or sort of broken their leg or well, something. Well, I have a dancer who's injured right now. She yeah. twisted her ankle and the a rehearsal, so I was just, I felt like a protective mother through the whole show, watching all the dancers and singers. I mean, I wasn't really paying attention to the audience yeah. as much as I'd like to, because I just wanted everyone to get through the show and not get hurt. Yeah. You've become, you've become a really, you've become a real dancer. I mean, I don't mean to say that you weren't before, mm -hmm. but you've been really been working at that. I mean, it was obvious on this, on this tour that... Well, I'm working it in the really show. You've really got the stuff, you know? Uh-huh. Thank you. <laughs> but I have been working on it, yes. I mean, do you feel that too, that you really... But it helps. It? I mean, I hired a lot of dancers who were very helpful and collaborative in the choreography. Yeah. And uh, they, I mean, everybody's different in the show. And I think everybody said, okay, now we're going to do this. And so whoever was good on, with that particular style of dancing yeah. worked with everyone else to get it right. Yeah. And you have a dance director, but you get down with these people and say, well... I want to convey this. I mean, as a matter of fact, yeah. I want to convey stuff where you actually show them steps. Or? Well, no, my contribution was this is how I want to present this song. Mm -hmm. And we put the songs together so that it was an arc, an emotional arc in the show. It starts off this way and it ends this way. And I basically thought of sort of vignettes for every song and how this is what I want to do in this song. Yeah. And then, and I, we talked to Vince about the costumes and the feel that I wanted, and then he would fool around with it for a while and then based on um what song we were doing he would pull a dancer or two who were he thought were good at this kind of stuff and they would yeah. collaborate together and come up with it and then i'd come in and say i like this i don't like that yeah. kind of 
since you're inventing a new dance steps here, will you be seeing this stuff on the on the streets anytime soon? Well, I think that a lot of people haven't seen voguing, and I think yeah. that that should make an impression on people, and I think it'd be great if everybody starts doing it. I think yeah. it's great. I mean, voguing, voguing was going to be a big thing. It was, but it didn't make it, so maybe it will have another chance. Yeah. Why do you think it didn't? Because they didn't have a spokesperson like me. <laughs> <laughs> and why are you promoting it, then? It's because I love it. What's so appealing about it? We're trying to get behind Vogue. Well, you know what? I, I love this. Also, you know? I think it has a lot of humor to it, too. I mean, yeah. it's just so sort of arrogant and there and presentational, you know what I mean? Yeah. Self-conscious, in a way. And I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I really do. Why do you come to Japan to start tours? I mean, a lot of people do. Uh, it just worked out time-wise. I mean, it's easier to go, if you go to Europe, it's easier to start from Japan and sort of go that, yeah. go in one direction than to, like, sort of hop all over the place and change time zones yeah. and stuff. I mean, was it your idea to start to be the first act to ever play this place out in no. Shiba? I would prefer to be indoors, really, because I knew this was going to happen. Yeah. Last time I came to Japan, the exact same thing happened, only we didn't do the show. Yeah. And I was not going to, like, go through the same thing again. I was so depressed. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, but I mean, there was so much rain that I, it's really hard for me to know what did and didn't work in the show because I was dealing with another element, yeah. you know what I mean? And I was just trying to get through the show and not break my leg and watch over the dancers. So. Can you tell, tell me how you work with, you know, with Patrick and Stephen as, uh, in producing and songwriting? Or, you know, you, are you the person who's in charge or is it a total equal collaboration? I understand, I learned today that you play like guitar and keyboards and I never knew that. Mm -hmm. Uh, an equal collaboration? I suppose in the beginning it is, but in the end, um, I say what goes and what doesn't go. That's because true. So. It's me out there, you know, not Steve and Pat. Yeah. And they understand that. But I mean, who could, do you trade ideas back and forth? Do you yeah. come up with melody lines, or is it most with yeah. lyrics, or? Lyrics and melody lines. And to get inspired for all this, do you got, do you, are you forced to go out to dance clubs a lot? Mm. No. <laughs> Or do you go out to dance clubs a lot? I do, but I'm not forced to. I was just trying to be wry. Yeah. Wry <laughs> or pumpernickel. <laughs> yes, yes, it's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you think, do you think, since you do go out to dance clubs occasionally, mm -hmm. do you see stuff that might be the next to voguing? And you see new stuff coming up? You're on top of this, right? Um, you, you can tell us. Well, quite frankly, I haven't been out in a couple of months because I've been working on the show. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what's after voguing. That'll let you know when I find out. Did you have any difficulty uh, can seeing Godier come up with unusual designs for the clothes in the show? Or was no, he, he's, he's very creative. Uh, and we collaborated on anything. I mean, I actually sent him drawings originally about wh what I wanted, which were the first... I mean, a lot of the costumes were, like, inspired by my stick drawings. Yeah. And then he kind of elaborated and threw his stuff in. Your stick drawings? Yeah, I'm not a good artist. <laughs> I thought art may have run in the family. Was, you know, no, unfortunately, stuff. and mm. all my brothers and sisters are good that way except uh, me. Okay. This is my compensation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to take a little pause right now because even at breakfast with Madonna, there are still commercial breaks, right? But we'll be back in a moment with some big questions about love and marriage, so don't wander off. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from the United States, MTV brings you Saturday Night Live, the show that broke all the rules and brought you the likes of John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, Chevy Chase, and Steve Martin. 
Where else can you see exclusive live performances from the world's top rock stars and celebrity hosts from the stage and screen? Saturday Night Live, the show the stars beg to be on. So tune into MTV for a dose of rock and roll comedy. Weeknights at 2300, exclusively on MTV.